everyone. Thanks for joining us. This is Sip and Tea with Nat and Z. I'm Nat. And I am Z. Welcome back. <laughs> After a very tumultuous <laughs> break. <laughs> yes, very tumultuous break. Uh, yes, we had a lot going on. Both of us were in the throes of it, so to speak. Mm, and then some. Yes. And then some. So yes. we're happy to, to be back with you all and uh sharing our tea with you yes Hope everybody's been well what you been up to z um hmm so i've had bronchitis nobody, got time for that. A, nobody has time for that it started out as a cold and then transitioned into bronchitis which then triggered asthma so i'm still dealing with that so if you hear me coughing or you hear it sound like a frog in my throat you know Y'all just going to have to deal because I've been dealing with this shit <laughs> for <laughs> like six weeks now. So I'm trying. We here though. But definitely it's not as, um, I would say, uh, as crazy as what you have been through the last yeah. few weeks. So few weeks. It's, been, it's been a journey. I uh, had surgery on the 21st of September and um, was recovering. Thought everything was cool, was in the hospital, then came out a week, and then my incision ruptured, I had to go to the hospital, had a blood transfusion, had to go back to surgery, then go back for another procedure. So, you know, I've been, you know, kind of in the throes of trying to get back to healing and walking and using a cane and not using a cane, and it's been a lot, and the whole lack of sleep thing. So it's it's been a quite the, the interesting uh, couple of weeks. Yes, so, it has um, been. I'm happy to be up and walking around and stuff, so I'm very thankful. Yep. And hey, we back, bitches. Ooh. So, you know, <laughs> we are definitely back. Maybe not at 100%, but better hey, than not. Better, better than, than not. Better than not. So, um, so let's go ahead and jump into the tea of the day. Um. You know, we do disclaimers. If this is the first time joining us, welcome. If it's not, then, you know, we make sure we uh, give you a disclaimer so you don't try to come back and blame us for some shit that happened to you because you was listening to us. So <laughs> that we, are not, <laughs> we are not tea experts. And you should speak to your doctor when drinking herbal tea as there are potential side effects when mixed with some medications. Um, this should not be a substitute for medication. We are not affiliated with any of these companies, nor are these endorsements. So what is the tea on the table today, Nat? Well, um, the, <laughs> the name of the um, episode today is Lost in Translation. So we're talking about the five love languages, which flows into the type of tea that we're having today, right? So the tea on the table is Call Me Your Sweetheart Blend. It's a winsome tea company blend. So, you know, over the centuries, orange blossoms have come to symbolize the Western ideal of love and marriage. Did you know that? Because I didn't. No, I did not. I did not know that. It's something new every day. It has been said that the scent of orange blossoms could cause anyone to fall in love. Well, V, damn. Who who knew? (laughs) (laughs) You know, well, we aren't matchmakers, but if there's any one thing that we're sure you'll fall in love with is this tea. It's a created blend using semi-oxidized oolong from Taiwan, known for a lively, full flavor with hints of berry jam and sweet floral undertones, and a mix of jasmine and dried orange pieces to recreate the majestic scent of orange blossoms. Wow, that's quite descriptive. Rounding out the bend is... A Ceylon black tea for some added depth and a little bit of green tea from Taiwan to top off the goodness. Like love, the cup is sublime. Brew a pot for someone special today. And hey, look, we said we're not uh, matchmakers. Don't be going out there sniffing orange blossoms. Thank you. Thinking Mm -mm. you're going to fall in love because we didn't said it, okay? That part, (laughs) that part. And then you're picking orange blossoms and putting them around your house. To try to woo somebody because <laughs> you think, oh, this is going to work. Because I had heard on Sip and Tea with Nat and Z that, uh, you know, I'm going I'm to get my, my boo thing for it. Because, you know, it's cuffing season. I, oh, you have, yes. You have cuffing sleeves in COVID? Is that even uh, possible? It is. Know. <laughs> you can have cuffing, cuffing, cuffing season. That shows you how long I've been out the game. You can have cuffing season if you pick a partner. And you guys quarantine for two weeks before. Mm -hmm. And then, you know. That's a lot more work to be put into cuffing season. But, you know, it is what it is. Hey, 
Make it work. You got to do what you got to do in a <laughs> pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> make it work. Make it work. <laughs> so, yeah. So um, going on to the hot tea, Z, what's going on? Ooh, and a lot. I mean, let me not say that. There is stuff, but it's stuff that I just don't care about. So I'm just going to give you all right. Just going to give you stuff that, you know, came across and piqued my interest. Um, So first up is Beyonce. So she recently released her um, second uh, Ivy Park uh, and Adidas apparel collection. She called it the Drip 2 collection. It released on October the 29th and then a second release in some stores on October the 30th. I tried to cop a sweatshirt, had it in my cart, was waiting for it to say release. It released and was like, sorry, it's already sold out in 30 seconds. How the collection, I have no idea, literally have no idea. So this is now the second time I was unable to purchase something. So I was pretty bummed about that, but she did add some additional sizes this time around because she had some criticism that the sizes weren't all inclusive. Mm-hmm. So the sizes mm-hmm. ran from um, XXXS, which is, I guess, triple small, which I didn't even know existed. Really? Yeah. That's my daughter's size, like zero. Basically. So it's triple extra small to 4X. Um, So I thought that that was pretty good. And she, last time around, she um, gave special deliveries to her celebrity friends. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, like Reese Witherspoon got a delivery, Janelle Monet got a delivery, um, Yara Sahidi got a delivery. Mm-hmm. But this time around, um, the, she still did celebrity deliveries, but these people were m- more all inclusive of probably the people who support her. So there were a lot of LBGTQI um, mm. artists who received boxes um some instagram stars who received boxes Mm -hmm. and then there were some people that you probably would recognize um that received boxes and she basically said you know thank you for all of your um, contributions to the Mm -hmm. culture i see you and i respect you so i thought that that was pretty dope um she is on three covers of British Vogue, and okay. they will hit uh, newsstands November 6th. She is in Ivy Park collection in one of them, and then two other designers. They skate me right now. One is a sheer uh, black bodysuit, and baby is giving all the body, and wow. I'm just like, let me print this out and tape it to my refrigerator so my ass <laughs> will stay out. she says in the magazine that the pandemic and the current social unrest has provided her some clarity and her new goal is to kind of slow down and shed stressful things from her life same sis same and she has decided to give herself permission to focus on her joy again same sis i think this Mm -hmm. pandemic has given us a given all of us uh enough time to reflect and think about what is really truly important um so kudos to her a lot of people took it as she was retiring um but i don't know how when apparently she still has two netflix deals in the pipeline so um take it as she's retiring maybe she's just taking some time like the rest of us right like she she deserves so you know she's already um, isolated as it is so i mean right so let that let that baby live let her Mm -hmm. enjoy her kids and her husband and take some time off right um halloween uh celeb edition so the pandemic has definitely brought out a lot of creativity in people's halloween costumes Mm -hmm. i mean just you know just the general public i've seen some very creative costumes i saw this one girl dressed up like gina um from martin the episode where she got her head stuck in the bed uh (laughs) headboard (laughs) i saw that that had me dying um somebody done dressed their baby up as the mayor from chicago oh that sent me all the way okay the mayor from chicago i saw that meme i saw that meme with the pants and the big shoes yes they did that baby oh they did that baby up um but the celebrities um, did not come to play. So Sierra, she um, posted a few pics on her IG page. She dressed up as Nicki Minaj, oh. uh, Cardi B, Meg The Stallion, and then her and her husband dressed up. She was Janet Jackson. He was Buster Rhymes um, oh, from that video. Yeah, What's that? Yeah. Um, What's it gonna be? Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. So that was cute. I remember Lizzo, when that came out. Yes, and they had the full. Okay, they had the full production, honey. Okay. Russell had his uh his Buster Rhymes wig on. Um, 
Yeah, they were in full, full costume, okay? Lizzo, she dressed up as the fly on Mike Pence head. <laughs> but oh the thing God. that killed me, that sent me, is that she had the Monica shoes on. They look like uh, from the... No. What was that song? That was from the, the, the ver- yes, when she, the verses that we thought, uh, what's her name, had on, Brandy, Brandy had, had on, on yes. during the verses. Lizzo had me on the floor, okay? Stop the white um, shoes. Ryan Destiny, I don't know if many people know who Ryan Destiny is. She was the on the show um star that um mm-hmm. oh what is his name? Lee Daniels show. It used to okay. come on after uh what was that show with Cookie Empire. Empire. She, pretty girl, beautiful. She dressed up as Lauren Hill and literally I had to do a double take because I was like, okay, well which one is Lauren Hill? Really? Like she was dead on. Like dead on. It was definitely like wow like okay a doppelganger to yes degree yes um and then there was somebody i think she's a plus size model mm-hmm. her name is tabira majors yes she got the award because she did a beyonce the tribute. whole tribute like all of her videos yes that production was like 10 minutes long yeah i was like you know what this this is gonna be me someday because i was like you giving me life you yes plus size model and she said she couldn't dance. I was like, sis, where? Because you're putting on a full-on choreography. The, the silhouette from the, yes. yeah, the when, when she's on the chair and or, yes. whatever, all that. Just, I was blown. She ate that. She ate that. Like, after I saw that, I was like, mm, everybody lost. She won. Everybody can go home. Hands down. Hands down. And she um, had thickums, too? I was like, Exactly. Oh, exactly. Give your best life. Um, honorable mentions is Remy Ma, Papoose, and their daughter Mackenzie. Mm-hmm. They were dressed up as zombies, and they even had the baby dressed up as zombies. And you know how they do the zombie walk? Well, you know that baby just started walking not too long ago, <laughs> and she's doing the zombie walk, but it's not, <laughs> it's not intentional. It's just the way she walks, <laughs> and that had me dying laughing. Okay, I forget um, they capitalize on on it. Yes. And then another honorable mention to a friend of ours um, who dressed their daughter up as yes. Ruth Ginsburg, but she was baby Ruth Ginsburg. She had the wig, the pearls, Everything. <laughs> and the gavel. I was like, okay, <laughs> you won. That Most creative so toddler uh, costume. Yeah, she won. definitely. Definitely. That's too cute. Um, and then lastly, just rounding it out, <clears throat> I've been just trying to find things that bring me joy to watch. Um, I don't really like watching too many things that are really heavy. I mean, I am watching Unsolved Mysteries, um, the new season that came up on Netflix. Um, But I started watching Sister, Sister. Hilarious. Let me tell you, Jackie, she does, Jackie does not get enough credit. Okay, let's give this woman her roses while she is here. She is hilarious. Do you hear me? Oh my gosh, she has me dying on that show. She's too to, funny. I have to check that out. I have to check that oh out. Oh my gosh, she's too funny. And then um, This Is Us um, just started back. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'll and start I'm, watching that one of these days. Yeah, it's now I just did. I, I am contradicting myself because I said I don't like watching things that are too heavy, but This Is Us was really good. A lot of um, melanated deficient people were in the comments on, on ABC's, or uh, NBC's. Is it on ABC, NBC's page saying a Facebook page upset because how dare they tackle the current <laughs> situation in our country? Like, how dare Wait, they talk what? about George Floyd? Yeah, so the episode was centered around like the aftermath of the George George Floyd murder right. and it, COVID. So they weaved both of those stories um, into the storyline. Right. And people were upset saying they'll move stop watching it because how dare you? I came to this show to be um, relieved of what's going on. I don't want to be browbeat with this stuff all over again. And I'm just like, uh, it's the world. It's the world, sis. Well, how it's about the, the melanated people that don't have a choice to be but browbeat exactly. about it like, every day that watch the show? Like, this exactly. is a reminder. It's a reminder. And I appreciated it because it wasn't too heavy. So it wasn't like, oh, it's in your face. It's right. just, this is a family who is currently dealing with the shit that's going on today. I'm sorry, Randall's black. I know you people think because he was 
um, somehow is because he was adopted by a white family that somehow they made him white. He is mm. black man in um, America in a country that does not value his skin. How? What do you mean? How dare they talk about that? That, that they is would do it a privilege on a whole like, other level. Exactly. So y'all can just stop watching. I'm not. Go ahead and watch whatever y'all want to watch. I don't know what y'all watch. Uh, go watch That's so supermarkets. Right, y'all can watch like, Supermarket mm-hmm. Sweep. Yeah, but y'all probably be upset with that because of Leslie Jones. I don't know. Go watch. Uh, go find some old uh episodes of Little House on the Prairie or some shit. Um, what was that? That Michael uh Highway to Heaven. Go find some oh, Highway yeah, to Highway Heaven. To heaven. Michael <laughs> Is that his name? Michael <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Y'all don't want to see the real world. Go watch that shit. Um, I just don't understand the sense of entitlement even. that they should say. How dare you? Well, exactly. how how dare you know if Randall walking out the door, he doesn't have his white family hit with him, right? To protect, protect, and I use that loosely him from whatever the ills of a society are. But you know, I don't even watch the show. I'm just speaking on that. But anyway, yeah, mm, that's just, so mm, okay. All right. Well, that's all I got. All right, now, so we're gonna take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll jump right into our tea time segment. So now we're back. Thanks again. So as we said earlier, this topic is called Lost in Translation, talking about the five langu- love languages created by uh, Gary Chapman. And I can't recall like his background fully um, and how he developed them per se. But to go into the definition of them, the five love languages are five different ways of expressing and receiving love. Words of affirmation, quality time, receiving gifts, acts of service, and physical touch. Now, we all know not everybody communicates in the same way. We give and receive love very differently. We have different ways that we prefer to receive and give love to everyone. And it's built on numerous things. So to break it all down, as far as the different types, we're looking at acts of service. So if your love and language is acts of service, you're going to value what your partner does as far as going out of their way to make your life easier. So, you know, these types of things require thought and some time on their part, which we, you know, definitely appreciate. We're big on those that appreciate acts of service. It looks like actions that speak louder than words. We really want to see what they they do. And that's how they communicate their love to another person. Um, you know, picking up laundry, cooking a meal, you know, stuff like that. Bringing you soup when you're sick. Just little things that they see as this is how I can show you what I'm doing. And they're about the action right. of what they're doing, you know? Right. So it's, it's nice. I mean, some people, this is really their love language. I think, you know, this is definitely my husband's love this language. This is mine. Yeah. This is my love language. I'm all about acts of service. I'm all about action speak louder than words. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> because anybody, and this is my thought process, you could tell me you love me, right? Mm-hmm. But words are just words, right? Words without any kind of action behind it are just that. So how do I, I look at it like, how do I really know? Right. It's acts of service. If you hear me talking about my brakes and you go grab my keys and you go take my car to go get it looked at, that's mm-hmm. an act of service. I love that. If I'm like, damn, I, I'm on E, I'm not going to feel like getting up to uh, put, um, I'm not going to, sorry, y'all, my <laughs> child, <laughs> my child just busted. <laughs> she tried to be on the show. She tried to be on the show. She making you her head You about to do that? You ever know, see that video of that man who was talking? It was like in England, and his kids just busted a room like, that was my child just now. So, apologies. Um. But as I was saying, if you, like, if I say, damn, I don't feel like getting up in the morning to get gas and you take my car to go get gas that night. So I don't have to do it. Those are acts of service. Those are things that I, I appreciate. Right. Right. Um, But again, you know, you have to think about your partner. Sometimes your partner's love language plays into, right. So, um, you could have a partner or you yourself could prefer quality time yeah. and you know people who prefer quality time um they're the, or people whose love language is quality time they feel the most adored when their partner actively wants to spend time with them mm. and is always down to hang yeah. so 
it's all about the undivided attention. Yes. You know, there are no distractions. So no television, no phone screens, no social media. The, these are the times where you spend having meaningful conversations. You can share like in re- recreational activities. So maybe you come home from work. Well, we don't, uh, most of us are still working from home. So maybe after your day is done, you right. cook dinner together. You know, you read a relationship book with me. You focus on what I'm saying yeah. rather than be distracted when I talk. And you're hearing it. Right. Not just listening. Right. And I think one of the biggest things for people whose love language is quality time is that you are protective of our time together. Meaning you don't let other things get in the way of the time that we're supposed to spend with one another. So um, if that's your love language, you're probably sitting there saying, or if you didn't know what your love language was and you started to hear these things, you're probably like, oh, light bulb, this is me. These are the things that I like. These are the things that I want someone to do for me. Definitely. And then moving on to words of affirmation. Uh, this is definitely one that I that resonates with me. Most folks that have words of affirmation as a love language value verbal acknowledgments of affection. And like just the shortest, simplest things can can resonate with us. Just a little note, you know, these expressions make us feel understood and heard which kind of ties into the quality time. Like when you're, when you're speaking to someone and there's actions, like are, are you really hearing what I'm saying when you're spending that quality time? Are you hearing actively listening to what I'm, what I want? And then those words of affirmation can come into play. So they let me know or let you know how your day was. You have those conversation, you know, if you, the looking at how, if, if they're proud of you, you like hearing that if you like the way they look and giving you compliments and also complimenting you in front of others, not just in the, the quiet time, but letting folks know that you're not hidden or that you're proud of them. Um, you know, and acknowledging if something went wrong and you say you're sorry, that that's a huge one so that you understand that some things just weren't um, didn't go the way you planned, but they acknowledge that it hurt you and they acknowledge they need to, to tell you that. You know, and something as far as, you know, for some seeing themselves in the future and having plans and talking about the future together, that's a big one for some folks. I know for me, it's like I grew up in a household that we were big on um, acknowledgement and affirmations and stuff like that. And we we say, I love you. And, um, you know, that's something that we is very common without throughout my entire family. So one of those things, I, and I think when, when you get with your partner, you have to really think about, well, if that's not their love language is just saying, I love you once a day or once a month, is that going to be enough for you? If words of affirmation are driving your force to, you know, to right. get things going. Right. And you know, if, if you've listened to one, two and three, and you still don't feel like you've heard your particular love language, maybe this one is yours. Maybe your love language is gifts. And, you know, if your love language is gifts, it's not necessarily materialistic, right? So it's people who feel loved when you give them visual symbols of love. Mm -hmm. It's not about the monetary value. It's more about the symbolic thought behind the item. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you value the gift giving process. There's careful reflection in it. There's deliberate choosing of the object. There's some emotional benefit from receiving the present. So picking up a pint of like somebody's favorite ice cream Mm. or purchasing a a necklace that they love or buying somebody their favorite book of poetry from um, their favorite poet. I know for my husband, um, when after we had been dating for a while, um, one of the gifts I gave him was a keychain with the coordinates of our first date. And, you know, that's thoughtful. Yeah. If you're somebody who is if that that's your love language, if you got something like that. You'd be like, oh, wow, this person really thought about this gift and it really means something. And there's some symbolism behind it. It didn't cost a lot, but it was the thought that went into the gift. Right. That's priceless. Right. Definitely priceless. Right. Then the last one is touch. And people, you know, have this love language where they feel receiving some physical signs of affection. This is also me. Um, It can be incredibly affirming, one of the more affirming ones, an emotional connector for a lot of people. And it goes back, but something to consider and think about, it roots can sustain in um, going back to your childhood. Some people may feel a deep affection and love by their parents and they were held and kissed and touched, which was the case for me. And then they also feel really close emotionally and physically to those indiv- to those individuals. And this is something that definitely resonates with you. You feel the warmth and the comfort of physical touch and it's calming 
for you, you know, as far as rubbing your back, you know, giving a foot massage, you know, and all affection does not have to lead to sex. I think a lot of folks sometimes assume that if you're touchy feely, that it's going to um, develop into some sort of sexual act. And usually, you know, a lot of times with folks that have touch as this, it does not have to go into that. I mean, if it does, great bonus, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but it, that should not be the primary process of I'm doing these actions or acts of service or touching you or whatever, um, or saying these words of affirmation to kind of, cause then it turns into a, a manipulation. But if you know that this is your your love language and you understand that, make sure you communicate that to your partner and that they, and these things need to be talked about during the dating process because you don't want to wait and then you get into a relationship and then you're like, why don't you ever do this for me? Why don't you give me flowers? Why don't you touch right. me? Why don't we sit and talk? And those conversations were never had, you know? What right. I mean? Right. And if you <clears throat> listen to us go through these and you're still saying, well, I'm not really sure what my love language is and think and and no it doesn't have to just be one right right some people have multiple i saw this meme uh recently that was like whose ghetto idea was it to tell me i can only have one love language bitch i want all five <laughs> and then, i mean and hey and and you know some of us have all five i yep. honestly only have one um and we'll talk more about you know how we how me and Matt actually got to understand mm -hmm. and get clarity on how we developed our love languages you know if you're still struggling with trying to figure it out you know you can take a quiz it's at www.5lovelanguages.com um, and that will help you kind of navigate to kind of determine what your primary love language is but you can also use the following questions to kind of discover so you know you can ask yourself what does your partner do or fail to do that hurts you most deeply all right so the opposite of what hurts you most is probably your love language so if you say i i you know my my partner is always distracted when they when they get off work they're on social media then they turn on the news and then they they you know go do this and do that well maybe your love language is quality time mm -hmm. okay um what have you most often requested of your mate? The thing that you most often requested is likely the thing that m would make you feel most loved. So if you you say, you know what, I really need help. It would be nice if sometimes you just decided to take the trash out without me asking or wash the dishes or I came home and the laundry was folded and I didn't have to do that or dinner was cooked and I didn't have to worry about that. If those are the types of things that you seem to be requesting from your partner then maybe your love language is acts of service um and then in what way do you regularly express love to your partner and it's possible that your method of expressing love may be an indication that would also make you feel loved and i think that this happens a lot and i m my husband and i talked about this um recently it was something that i think we struggled with in the beginning of our relationship we were both trying to love one another with our personal love language right. and we don't speak he and i don't speak the same love language his is more um words of affirmation and touch and mine's is acts of service so i would always do acts of service and he would always give words of affirmation and touch. And then when you feel like things aren't reciprocated or appreciated, you're like, well, why aren't you doing this and doing that? Nine times out of 10 is because you're loving that person with your personal love language. Right. So sometimes we have to take a step back and say to ourselves, okay, this is what I want. What does my partner want? Yeah. What is it that they need? And then try to, to, to cater, you know, to that. I will say that the most common Love language is quality time. Mm -hmm. um, that seems to be the thing that resonates with a lot of people. They just like to spend that time with their partner. And I would say keep in mind that love languages really do also depend on the gender of your yeah, partner, culture, true. customs, values, the way they were brought up. And we'll talk about that after I get through the rest of this. You know, certain love languages, which are prevalent in the West, are much less common in non-Western cultures. Yeah. So, for example, in South Asian culture, directly pa uh, praising someone is very uncomfortable and often not well-received. So, instead of praising that person to a third party, uh, instead, praising that person to a third party is more highly valued when they hear about what you said about them through the grapevine. So, they would rather you big them up to somebody else mm -hmm. instead of to them directly. 
and you know, um, public displays of affection in some that's cultures. Very, that's so too a taboo. Is very taboo. So you know, you you have to take that into consideration. But I will say, one of the biggest things I think really plays a part in your love language is how you were raised and what occurred in your childhood. And we had a conversation about this recently. My family was not big on touch and praise and words of affirmation. And that's not a ding to my family. That's just, that's just how it was. Right. My family showed you they loved you by doing acts of service. And I know there were times when I was so used to having things done that when they weren't done, I almost, my feelings got hurt. Um, and an example that I gave Natalie was like, my grandfather drove me up to, to college every year. I'd come home for the summer and he would drive me back in the fall. And one year, he just couldn't do it. And he told me. Didn't tell me why. He just couldn't do it. And I thought my whole world was crashing. It was like, oh, why? Why is he driving me? Oh, God. It was like, <laughs> because, right. It was because I was trained with acts of service. That's just, that's how you show people that you care. Um, and I have realized that there are some ways that that could be to you know, that was to my detriment growing up. So what I try to do now is make sure that I don't do the same thing to my child. My child's love language, and I know you're probably all thinking, how do you know what a two-year-old's love language is? I do. My child is physical touch. She is a cuddler. She wants to be up under you. She wants to hold on you. She wants to just be on you. And if you don't give her that, she has a tantrum. Um, so, you know, you just have to kind of be mindful of that when you're in your relationships, mm -hmm. how that person was raised so and, key. and take that into consideration. So, so key. It's, um, and like speaking to what Z said with, with, um, with my family, like I mentioned, we were, we're a big family. We're big on quality time too, but, um, my parents always hugged and kissed us before we left the house and let us know that they loved us. And it was just that type of, and our, most of our family is like that and our, and our extended family is like that. So that's what I know. And that the acts of service, um, is something that you, I guess we kind of like combine those because if you love them, then you would do something for them. So that it kind of was like a blurred line for me that if you love them, then you're going to do X, Y, and Z. And then you may recipro reciprocate that just because you know that's something they like. And I don't think they were necessarily, of course, growing up, I didn't know that there was a definition of love languages and how that translated into to where I would be, where I would go going, going into an adult. And sometimes that can be unfortunate because to like what, what Z said, it can be to your detriment because mm -hmm. you have somebody <clears throat> who is touchy, feely, words of affirmation, and they could be the scum of the earth. Because they are manipulative. They could be a narcissist. Yes, you know what I mean? Yes, they play yes, for all of yes. those things because they know that's what they're like, oh, okay, if I do this and go cuddle up on her now, then I know I'll get my way. I know I just messed up, but I know if I just go rub her back or go rub her feet, then she'll forgive me or he'll forgive me. You mm -hmm, know, so there's mm -hmm. a way that you have to be also mindful how that works, you know, and looking on how to apply that in your relationships and you know, like we said, you don't, some people have all five, some people have one, two, three, whatever, and a combination thereof. And with the urge of affirmation, think about erring on the side of positivity and communications can definitely flourish. If you understand that that's your partner's um, love language, you doing that with them can build a whole other communication. Yes. But also keeping in mind on the negative side, that person could be just playing you and you hope that's not the case. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? But so you hope that's not the case, but it's just something, you know, to, to be mindful of and noticing the good things that they say and say it often, you know, and saying, oh, you know, you look cute today or you're flirt being flirtatious, if that's something, um, you know, because it's kind of like, you know, when we both, when we all were in the beginnings of a relationship, it was like the honeymoon period. Mm -hmm. so it was like all your love languages were met in the, love, yes, in the, in the yes. honeymoon period. But you didn't realize that, that that's what you were doing. Um, and then time, you know, that's your representative. And as time progresses, <laughs> <laughs> things don't happen because you don't get the, you know, affirming your mate in front of others. And be like, oh, yeah, that's my boo. That's my girl. That's my man. And that may happen all in the beginning. And then, you know, the quality time is there because you'll do whatever you need to do to try to spend time with that person. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And and mm -hmm. what does that look like? So 
you know, speaking to the quality times, I know you were you're mentioning that, you know, this is definitely the popular one. Yeah. So if you this is the most popular love language and, you know, how, when you're applying this in your relationship, right, if you are someone who is uh, dating or married to someone whose love language is quality time, you know, you want to make sure that you're carving out intentional space in your schedule um, for time together. And, you know, it could be going for a walk, which is something, you know, I think everybody should do in the pandemic. You need to get out. You need to get some fresh air. You need to clear your head and then just talk about, you know, what's going on. And again, a lot of us are on the edge. You know, a lot of us are experiencing anxiety. I read an article recently that like d- depression and anxiety in this pandemic is like at an all time high. Uh, yes, so is. maybe for someone who's whose love language is quality time, this is a good time to really spend time to see how they're doing. Ask them how they're feeling. Um, but the things you want to avoid, again, don't be distracted when you're with your partner. You know, don't view your partner as needy. I think if you, love language is not quality time, if you, and if you are just like not, like this is just not you. Like I know people who's like, look, just do stuff for me. I don't need you to touch me. You don't even got to tell me you love me, that I'm great. I don't care. Just, just, just do these acts of service for me, right? right. Sometimes they'll see a partner who needs quality time as needy. Don't come across like that, right? Yeah. Um, don't complain like, God, oh, you know, you want all my time. I can't, you, all you want me to do is be up under you all day. Like, let's right. not do that, right? If, if, your, if your partner's love language is quality time. Again, we're in a pandemic, so some of us, we ain't got no choice but to be up under somebody because right. it, it's been quality time. But try not to complain about it. And, then, you know, a good tip um, for someone who's struggling or is dating somebody that this is their love language, you know, take time every day to talk about three things that may have happened Mm -hmm. and how they feel about them or even take a personality test like a Myers-Briggs test and then discuss how your personality types um play out in your relationship this would be something that somebody who enjoys quality time would would greatly appreciate yeah you know but you could be dealing with somebody uh, who is like me and needs acts of service right (laughs) 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 <laughs> I heard that right and so go to the acts of service you know you have to think about you can't always for some folks acts of service is like chores like did you do the laundry did you take out the trash you know did you cut the grass and that does you can't make it about chores it has to be you know you have to be spontaneous think about that like try to avoid um ignoring requests for help if someone like z said earlier if they said you know i really could use some help with this don't go on about your business and be like, hey, let's go to a movie. And you're like, but I I need help to do something. <laughs> like, let's not go to a movie because I need help to do something. You know what I mean? Even though you're trying to be spontaneous, they, they, that person just might be like, look, I just told you I need help. And you're trying to spend some quality time with me. And now you've earned the hell out of me <laughs> because I'm not going to get this shit done. You know? So, <laughs> And then if you say you're going to do something, be like, okay, babe, I'll do it for you after we come back from the movies. And you don't. Saying that's just not that's not <laughs> there's no follow through and you're like, what 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 happened? You know? And even speaking to the chore part, please do not associate that certain roles are for certain genders. That is like one of the big biggest missteps because in my household, my husband does laundry. Thank you, God. Woo. <laughs> and I I do the cooking and the other stuff and like keeping the household neat and decorating and all that other stuff. Um making that house a home type feeling and light candles and stuff like that. He he don't he don't do all that. But I'm thankful and that's an act of service for him because I'm I do laundry sometimes and he's appreciative. I do return the favor and I'll do I'll go clean the bathroom or I'll do laundry and he'll come in and be like, babe, thanks. I really appreciate that. Right. I mean, but me trying to be all under him, he'll be like, mm, okay, can I, are we done? <laughs> <laughs> some days not always, but some days he's like, are we done? So, you know, something, a tip would be make a list of three or four things you would like your partner to help with. Um, then exchange your list. Don't add any more than one request a month because that might be pushing it, especially in this time of COVID. Hmm. Listen, you know, everybody's close. You asking for more than one thing. You you might be pushing yourself right out that door just to somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you remember, you know, your partner can only choose to do what is on the list. You cannot demand it. 
because that is setting you up for a whole other discussion, argument, knock down, drag out, you sleeping in the garage tonight type thing. Just no. That's just Yeah, other. don't, 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 you know. And, you know, if if you are someone who's in a relationship with someone whose love language is gifts, right? Um, you should you probably are going to win a lot of extra brownie points with a just mm-hmm. because gift. You just yeah. here just because, um, you know, or make sure to make special occasions on your calendar and honor the day and your partner with some type of thoughtful gift, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but you really need to avoid forgetting special occasions. Remember that material, it's not about materialism. It's not about the cost. And don't give gifts out of duty, right? If So if you're dating someone, if you're married to someone who you know their love language is gifts, don't feel like, oh, let me go buy this ninja a gift. Because, you know, if I don't, I'm going to have to hear it. Right. You know, mm. I ain't trying to be mad, so let me go get her. Right, let me go get the Xbox. Right, don't do that, right? But, you know, just be mindful. You know, be considerate. That's all. Yes. Um, you know, you can make a list of gifts that your partner has expressed excitement about receiving, right? And then you can um, buy those things in advance if you're, uh, you know, and then just give them the gifts over time. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't have to wait for a special occasion. You, If you're a penny pincher, you may not have to spend money, maybe make gifts you know, coupons, uh, you, you don't have to spend a lot of money and the money you do spend should be well invested. I saw recently on Instagram, there's this company, I can't remember the name of it now, but it's a subscription service and every month you get a date box oh. and the box has different things that will give you a date night. And so when your box comes like, hey, date night. So if maybe if you're somebody who is into giving, if, I mean, you're dating someone who, or married to someone who is into gifts maybe this could be something it's about 40 dollars a month you get a subscription once a month you know what's coming and you know you surprise them like hey date night and then you're off for the next month. <laughs> and then you're off the hook until the next month um you know so just think about that and maybe if you give a good gift and you are your love language is touch hey. maybe you get them touchy feeling hey. touch <laughs> yes yes and you know the one thing about touch it's easy to satisfy. It doesn't involve much planning. Exactly. <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> there's no money. There's, there, you hope maybe there's some exertion later. <laughs> you know, it's not about all of that. Like, you don't have to, <laughs> you know, you can walk up to someone, pat them on the booty, or, I mean, maybe you don't like that, but or rubbing them on the shoulders t- type of thing, just or rub their arm, um, you know, while watching a movie or, like, caress their hand. You know, something, something like that, you know, so something to consider is this exercise where you can, you caress your partner and try to discover the most sensitive. You can make this a game. You can make this as part two, a date night after Mm. you get your, after you get your date box, right? Yes. You might have one that has some alcohol or some wine to kind of chill the mood, some music or, or not, or maybe just have sports on in the background, whatever, whatever, you know, whatever's clever for you. You know, um, and you and your partner can use a spectrum rating scale to describe how positive or negative your touch is on different parts of their body. From one to 10, you know, 10 is for positive touch, you know, down to negative one, like, do that again, I'm gonna kick you, you know, (laughs) you know, like, don't, don't do that. Don't, mm -mm. you about to get a right hook if you do, if you touch me there again, you know, stuff like that. You know, and remember, you know, loving touch does not always need to lead to sexual intimacy, as I said before. It could just be laying on each other, honestly. Or, you know, my husband and I will, you know, he'll come home. And since I've been recovering, you know, that's clearly been an issue for us because I I sleep sitting up. So, but he'll sleep right next to me. Or if I come downstairs um, on a particular day, because mainly I stay in my room, but he'll come downstairs and we'll sit and watch TV. And we have a big, big ass couch, and literally, I will sit. We'll sit right next to each other. We may not be necessarily touching per se, or he'll move over, and that's I, I appreciate that, you know. Right. And it doesn't lead to anything, but it's still some sort of console, you know, him consoling me and what I'm going through. You know, times that he's like rubbed me on my back and said, you know, it'll be okay. His acts of service will be, you know, jumping up while you know when I was sick and helping me go to the to the restroom and. You know, that's a whole other um, 
topic of when when you're with your partner and certain things need to happen, his acts of service came into play with him helping to take care of me, you know, and helping me get to and from the bathroom, helping me change my dressings, you know, making sure he was coming sit with me in the hospital, you know, when I was out of ICU. So, you know, it definitely manifests different ways and it can be highlighted or enhanced by different situations. So mm-hmm. don't make light of those things and definitely, right. you know, make, make them, make them know you appreciate it. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. And, you know, we've, we've discussed a lot of the uh, positive attributes of the love languages and, you know, we've discussed some of the things to avoid, but, you know, this isn't without criticism. You know, there is, you know, there is a, a faction of, you know, people and folks who feel like, you know, and let's love language uh, theory is a bunch of malarkey. Malarkey! But, <laughs> um, you know, and some of the criticism that you, you'll hear about the five love languages is, you know, it suggests a, a mastering fluency over the love language system and then adapting it based on what the partner needs at the moment. And it's saying that that is more valuable than slowly, um, you know, relying on a dominant love language type. Now, you know, I feel like, you know, you should not uh, rely exclusively on your partner's love language and only communicate um, to them with that. But it is important to understand the things that make your partner um, happy, the things that bring joy into your partner's life, especially in the times that we're living in now. Um, We're all stressed. We're all like feeling like, oh, my God. Like the world is about to come to an end. Armageddon is upon us. So, I mean, you know, it's it's good if you have someone who's in tune with your needs and can supply you with those needs. Um, some people say it promotes codependency. I mean, I can see that. Um, so, you know, it, I, I think that that is a valid criticism. Um, it does say that it, there are some criticism that prevents partners from developing autonomy and authenticity. I think authenticity is one of the big things. Yeah. If you feel like you're doing all of these things because that person wants it and not because you really want to do it for them, then the person feels like it's fake. Yeah. Like, don't touch me because you know I like touch. Right. Don't give me gifts because just because you know I like gifts and there's no thought process behind that. You know what I mean? Um. So I see, again, that's a valid criticism. And this is a big one it's not completely inclusive of sexuality culture trauma and intergenerational differences in nuanced communities Mm -hmm. so that is also big right and i think that that's probably the biggest criticism and probably the one with the most i guess the most truth behind it or the most fact behind it like yeah i see that i definitely see that So, you know, I would say the bottom line is here that it's important not to use love language as a universal solve to remedy issues, right? Don't just rely on that to fix the problems in your relationship or the, you know, the the problems in your relationship or the communication, the lack of communication in your relationship. Don't just rely on that. Um, It's a useful tool to improve how we communicate and express ourselves to each other, but they shouldn't be the be all and end all. Yes. Solution for happiness. Okay. Mm -hmm. It really shouldn't. And it should just really just function as a starting point. Okay. You know that your partner's love language is touch. Use that as a starting point. If you know that your love language is acts of service, communicate that with your partner so that you can have this open dialogue Mm -hmm. and really get to know one another on a deeper, more intimate level so that you're both getting your needs met. Right. And then there's a deeper understanding of how you can move forward in the future. Okay. So, you know, that's the five five love languages, bitches. I mean, <laughs> I hope, <laughs> hope for them prosper. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I hope that was helpful for some of y'all. You know, if you if you you know, if you have a partner that you're trying to communicate with and you don't know, um, maybe some of this information you can use and take back to kind of work on your relationship, um, or work on yourself. And they have uh, ones just for men. Um, I don't know if they have one for women specifically, but I know there's a love language for men specifically. Yeah. Because they just communicate differently than we they do. They do. Absolutely. Mm. So all, the, all, all the yeah. time. <laughs> Speaking from experience. 
Um, so we're gonna go ahead and take a quick break and come back with our last sip of the day. And we're back. This is the last sip of tea with your hood Dalai Lama. Our most basic emotional need is not to fall in love, but to be genuinely loved by another, to know a love that grows out of reason and choice, not instinct. I need to be loved by someone who chooses to love me, who sees in me something worth loving. And that quote is by Gary Chapman. And remember that once you know how to give and receive love, it will help you to understand more deeply how you relate to others. And that is the last sip of tea with your hood, Dalai Lama. Thank you kindly. Thank you all for joining us this week on Sippin' Tea with Nat and Z. You can follow us on Instagram at Sippin' Tea Nat and Z underscore pod and on Facebook at www.facebook.com forward slash Sippin' Tea Nat and Z. Nat and yeah, Z. <laughs> <laughs> we gave the cobwebs out, folks. It's our first episode back, okay? Yeah. <laughs> to get information on upcoming podcasts, topics, guests, and news. And thank you for listening and see you next episode, which is going to be talking about how are we all dealing with this post-election stress? Thanks and have a good day. Bye-bye.